Alexander. All right, so it looks like we're live. So hello, welcome to ISO Dating 101 with Hashtag Open and Sarah Sloan. I'm Miley from Hashtag Open. This is a rebroadcast of our Saturday evenings um, live show. We are still getting used to how to live stream, so um, we didn't quite record it properly last time. So this is our redo so that we can get this video out there um, for all of our users. Um, so before I give it over to Sarah, I'm going to take a second just to tell you about Hashtag Open and who we are. So Hashtag Open is a sex positive and kink positive dating app. We offer 24 gender identities and 23 orientations to choose from as you're setting up your profile so that you can really um, represent yourself as you wish. We also allow for solo dating or partner dating so you can choose the experience that you wish or you can um, have both types of profiles. Aside from that, we also use hashtags to communicate your preferences, interests, and boundaries. That makes it easy to put out exactly what you're looking for and then you can actually use those hashtags to search for other people that are looking for common interests. So whether you're looking for platonic friends during quarantine, book groups, or kinky playmates to do some online fun, Hashtag Open has lots of connections waiting for you. So come check us out. And without further ado, I'm going to give it over to Sarah for some virtual dating tips. Awesome. Thank you, Miley. Um, so hi, everyone. My name is Sarah Sloan. I have been doing sexuality and kink education for uh, close to 20 years, 20 years ish. Um, I've also been active in alternative sexuality and alternative relationship communities since 1998. Um, so uh, that's a little bit about my background. I teach all over the country. I also consult with uh, hashtag open and uh, help them with education and doing things like this. So, um, so I'm really happy that we're having a chance to, to take another uh, tact on this one and come at it a second time. Um, so if you're seeing this recorded, just as a heads up, like we, today is April 1st and um, we're kind of now getting into the place where lots of folks are feeling a little bit more stressed over uh, COVID-19. We've had a number of extensions of shelter in place rules. So, so we're, we're in a place right now where things are a little bit scary. I think many of us have been having to rethink pretty much all of our lives about, you know, how close do we connect with friends? Who are the people that we need to check in with? Um, how are we going to continue having active uh, dating and sex lives during this uh, period of time? Um, and, and this is like, this is a hard and scary thing for lots of us. Um, for some of us, our libidos are like through the roof because sex and uh, getting off is kind of how we de-stress. Um, some of us are feeling a case of the lonelies right now, which is totally legitimate because when things are destabilized, we want to be close with people. Um, and for some people, their libidos have dropped down to almost zero. And it's totally okay to be there too. Um, but, you know, one thing that we do have that we can, I think, come out of this well with is um, a desire to connect with people um, in different ways. And so we're going to talk about using, um, you know, online dating as a platform for that. I'd like you to not necessarily think of this just as finding somebody to go out on dates with. Like I think uh, hashtag open and uh, dating apps in general, but I think particularly the way that hashtag open is set up, it makes it really easy to just find people who share things in common with you or who you're curious about and connect with. Um, I do believe that, when we, one of the things that makes a difference in terms of resilience, and it's something that I talk with uh, some of my coaching clients about, is moving between a feeling that the world is is out of our control to having something that we can do something about, whether it's a, a thing that we can grow, a thing that we can learn, a thing that we can change. And so I'd like to invite you if you're feeling like, oh, this is this is a lot right now, is to look for a thing that you do have some ability to influence and you do have some ability to control. That could look like um, learning about something sexy or relationship wise that you don't know. It could look like you and partners having conversations about what you'd like to explore. Um, but I, I would like to encourage you to take a growth mindset with this of like, what can I 
do to create a better outcome for myself. Um, so, so as part of that, I, I did mention that I do think that online dating can be a really great way for us to connect with people. Um, first of all, online dating, and it, and it has always been this way, gives us a chance to meet people that we wouldn't normally meet in our day-to-day -day lives. Um, and I think that's particularly true for folks that are outside of a binary, whether it's um, that we're doing, you know, we're genderqueer or gender nonconforming or trans, um, if we are interested in open relationships of some sort, if we're interested in kink, um, you know, those aren't always labels that we can wear in our day-to-day -day life. So, you know, our next door neighbor might actually also be interested in having open relationships, but we would never know it unless we develop that relationship with them. So having an online dating app or a dating app that lets you be able to connect with people that specifically share that interest can be really um, a way that we can we can kind of get outside of our own circles and connect with people. Um, I think this is specific, especially the case when what we're interested in is something that's um, that's judged or marginalized by culture. So, for those of us who are are kinky, um, you know, it's not exactly like you know that's that's part of what we normally talk about with sex. This gives us a chance to meet people who are interested in or into what we ourselves are interested in or into. Um, it also gives us a chance to kind of uh, test date. You know, we can we can kind of have this opportunity to chat with somebody, get to know them a little bit without necessarily having to um, want to get to um, an in-person hookup with that rapidity that we're kind of used to from, uh, you know, like pre-COVID dating. Um, you know, it used to be that we would, you know, that, that using online dating as an opportunity to like cut to the chase and get to a, an in-person um, meeting was the priority, but now we have an opportunity to kind of like check it out a little bit, test it out. If you're interested in a hookup, maybe your hookup becomes a uh, let's have a phone sex date or let's have a video chat date as opposed to getting together in person. So you get an opportunity to get a feel for people in a little bit of a way that you might not otherwise if um, if the goal was solely to like get from hey to first meeting as quickly as possible. Um, <clears throat> another option, another thing that uh, dating apps can give us right now is a chance to learn about ourselves. Um, it's pretty common for people to not know that they're interested in something until they talk to somebody about it. Um, you know, I know that when I was first start exploring kink, um, there were a lot of things that I was just like, oh, that sounds really scary or that's that that doesn't make sense to me. But over time, having a chance to chat with people about like, what does that mean? What is what do you get from it? Um, how does that work for you? Um, gave me a chance to I, identify those things that I was like, oh, yeah, that that could actually be really amazing for me. Um, and that can be the case with kink. It can be the case with um, open relationships because so many people do it in so many different ways um, that chatting with people who maybe do swinging or people who do or who are monogamish can give us a little bit more of a window into whether that might be a thing that works really well for us as well. Because yeah, this morning somebody yeah. had asked me what... Um, the name hashtag open actually means. And they said, does that mean that it's just for people in open relationships? And I said, I really think it's so much more subjective to that because yes, mm -hmm. it can mean that you are in an open relationship or you're searching for an open relationship. Yeah. But I also like the aspect of being open-minded. Like you said, you know, once you start exploring and getting out mm -hmm. there, if you're open-minded, you might find that you're interested in a lot more things than you had initially yeah. um, realized. So, you know, I think that I love that that's part of the, the name of our, our, our app. Yeah. That it really can mean so many different things to so many different users, depending on how yeah. you want to use the app and what experiences they're looking for. Mm -hmm. And the worst thing that's going to happen when you take that mindset is that you're going to find out something that you're just like, yeah, that's still not a thing that I'm interested in. Um, you know, Maybe it's not your cup of tea and that's okay too. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've been uh, open relationships uh, exclusively since and I have a couple of times had conversations with people about the way that they do their own open relationships. And I realized like, oh yeah, okay, that's not gonna be a, a thing that's gonna work for me personally. 
but it gave me the opportunity to just dis- dismantle some of the assumptions that I have. Mm-hmm. You know, we get a lot of uh, negative information about what different kinds of relationships and what, what different orientations mean it from mainstream media. And when we have an opportunity to talk with somebody and we say, okay, can you explain to me like what you and your wife get out of swinging? Or can you explain to me why you're interested in that kink? It gives us a chance to understand where they're coming from. And, and maybe that changes our own feeling about it. And when we have a friend of ours who comes out to us and says like, Hey, this is, this is part of who I am. This is part of how I do relationships. We can kind of go like, Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I know I've talked to people like that. And so it lets us kind of be better community members. I think when we understand where other people are coming from and we get a chance to demystify it. Um, so thank you for pointing that out. I appreciate that a lot. Um, and part of that is also like to, to dovetail with that is it's our communication skills. This is a chance for us to build those communication skills to, to, you know, put aside our own judgments, to ask for what we really want. Um, a lot of us, particularly those of us who were raised by our culture to be female, um, you know, we have difficulty sometimes in asking for what we really want. Mm -hmm. And I think for folks who we've raised to be male in our culture, um, sometimes there's a a difficulty in asking for emotional needs to be met. Um, Being able to connect with people who are already at least on somewhat of the same page that we're on um, gives us an opportunity to stretch our communication skills a little bit. Um, How do we talk about what it takes for us to be happy in a relationship? How do we talk about um, our fantasies? How do we talk about our boundaries? Um, You know, when we, when we start with an app that, uh, that lets us do that. And we start with that as kind of like on the front end of the conversation, rather than as something that we feel like, oh, maybe we need to disclose this later on after we've started talking to somebody. It gives us a chance to more closely ensure that we're going to get our needs met. And it sets a tone for whatever that intimacy and that interaction is going to be with the person we're chatting with that prioritizes consent and communication up front. Um, so there's a few ways that we can, we can do this. Um, let's talk about the profile real briefly. Um, be clear about what you're looking for and what your boundaries are. Um, you know, if you, if you really are only looking for video chat, put that in there. If you're looking for a a slow connection that will turn into potentially a dating relationship, put that in there. If you and your partner are looking for, you know, you're, you're a little curious about this. You're not super sure that uh, doing non-monogamy is going to be for y'all, but you're, you're dipping your toes in the water, put that in your profile. Um, The more that you tell people who you are and what you're about, the better the chances that you're going to get that. Um, Additionally, think about putting in the the profile, like why, why folks would want to connect with you? What makes you cool? What makes you exciting? Is it the fact that you've got a really super cute dog? Um, when we did this original broadcast, somebody, I mentioned putting a picture of you and your dog in there. And, uh, one of the folks in chat said like, I'll automatically swipe right on pictures of dogs. (laughs) Um, but tell, you know, show people a little bit about who you are. Let them see all of the wonderful ways that you show up in the world. Um, you know, if there's a band that you really love, wear the band T-shirt. If there's a picture of you um, at the Grand Canyon or at Machu Picchu because you love traveling, put that in there. Give folks something that they want to connect with you on. Um, additionally, um, you know, use your boundary, like expand your boundaries a little bit in your profile. Um, include you know, the things that you're curious about. Um, I know that in, you know, if you're using hashtag open, one of the options is that you can set little, um, set up the different sections of hashtags and you can say like, I want to talk about, or I'm curious about, and then you can put all of those things that you would like to, um, talk with folks about so that you give people more of a reason to swipe right on you. Um, and also swipe right on more people. Um, you know, this is not a high pressure situation. This is the chance to say hi to somebody and see if you have any kind of connection. Um, this is not just about um, like goal oriented 
right now. Um, if we take the attitude that this is about connection oriented, um, when it comes to our communication, it gives us a chance to make those friends and to make those potential partners without having the pressure of like, it has to turn into something right now. Um, so there's no reason to not expand your boundaries a little bit. Um, when it comes to approaching folks, uh, I, um, as a veteran of online dating, um, I will tell you <laughs> that the, the, my big turnoff is somebody who just says, hey, or hi. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, it's All like that, the, the, the little one word yeah. intros. Uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> you know, and I'm just kind of like, OK, is this the best that you're like? I feel like it's sort of like a job interview, but not really. It's kind of like think about this as your opportunity to go out to a mixer and there's hundreds of people in the room and you can either say hi and hey to everybody or you can start a conversation. And, you know, saying hi to somebody doesn't doesn't have any buy in. But if you say like, um, oh, hey, Miley, I saw, you know, like I, I I'm so glad you swipe right on my pro profile. I I see that you, um, you know, I see I see that you said that you're curious about uh, kink and I've been doing kink for a long time. I'd love to chat with you about what you're curious about. Or you can say like, oh my gosh, Sarah, I see in one of your pictures that, you know, that you're wearing a Sriracha t-shirt and that's really funny. Is that something, and I'm, you'll find that in my profile if you go look, um, you know, but it's, it's like, oh, that's really funny shirt. And, yeah, you know, and I, cool. yeah, make it, make it about the person that you're talking to. Um, you know, uh, if you're, you know, if if you are uh, a cis straight guy, um, I'm just going to let you know that that the hey and hi are about 90 percent of what most folks who are uh, femme or female of center get. Um, so if you if you give a little bit more of that in your introduction, then chances are you're going to get a better response rate. Um, people want to know that they're, they're being contacted because there's something appealing about them and not because it's just a numbers game. So make sure that we're actually connecting with other people in a way that makes them feel special. Um, I also feel like if you want to give a compliment, this is something that, um, I learned working retail, um, a number of years ago, um, Compliments are most effective when, uh, at least compliments to a stranger, when they are about a choice that that stranger um, has made. So complimenting somebody's earrings or the color of their hair or um, their dog or, you know, some, some piece of artwork in the background. Those are all really safe ways to compliment somebody and to engage them that don't make them feel like, oh, this person might be going a little too fast. Um, we want to avoid sexualizing strangers, even if it's on a dating app, um, simply because it creates a safer space. And one of the, the core um, values of hashtag open is that we want to create a space where people are curious and are safe to engage in that curiosity. So just a pro tip on approaching people. If you're going to do a compliment, totally do a compliment, but make it about something that you know that that person made a choice about and, and that they're probably really excited that you noticed um, because that always shows that we're paying attention to the person behind the screen. Um, once you've had some some chance to connect with people, um, we want to encourage you to do some safe ISO dating right now, um, particularly if your dates dating has always been in person. Um, and I know folks who are have done long distance relationships can kind of like they have some skill sets around this. But for a lot of us, we've never really dated without getting to meet somebody in person. Um, but we can do almost anything that we do in person with a partner um, on a date. Um, I have had so far, I have had some, um, you know, beer clock dates uh, where I, I get on the phone with, uh, with a friend at 
you know, at five o'clock and we literally crack a beer open together. We'll talk a little bit about the beer we're drinking and then we'll move on with, with, uh, with our conversation. Um, I know some folks are doing Skype or zoom or FaceTime dates so that they can see their partner's face. You could do a lunch or a dinner date where you have your, um, your food in front of you when you make the call and you can kind of like have dinner and conversation just like you would in a restaurant um, without a waiter showing up at the inappropriate time. <laughs> um, Google Hangouts are another great option right now because it's free. Um, you know, you can you can do Netflix and chill dates uh, with Netflix party. Um, you can, uh, if you want to crank it up and have a little uh, online hookup, uh, you can do that either via video or um, but by voice um, without ever having to like go outside of your door. Um, and all of these are really great ways to connect with people. And and make sure that you and they are keeping yourselves really really safe right now. Um, there yeah, so there are many options right now yeah. that you just have to be creative and um, you know we'll try and uh, on our social media share some of our mm -hmm. ideas too. Um, I got to do an online um, Zoom rope demonstration. I got to tune into oh, last cool. weekend. A date that I met on hashtag open. We did a little Snapchat um, one on one, and then we both tuned into a, the Zoom demo, and it was really cool. It was definitely something that I had never done before, but mm -hmm. you know, I think we're all learning as we go and um, yeah. finding new fun ways to stay engaged in whatever communities or interests that you have. Yeah, and just digitally or virtually is is you know, it's it's kind of fun trying trying. Uh, you know, if you're open to trying new things, it's a it's a fun little adventure to try this from home. Yeah. And, and online. My sweetie and I um, had a we had tickets to I was I was telling Miley, yeah, I was mentioning this to you ahead of time. Um, we had tickets to a book reading for an author that we both really love um, last night. And clearly that didn't happen in person, but they decided to move it online. And so he and I both were at the same virtual um, book reading um, and we were on the phone with each other so that we could make the same comments that we would make in person. Um, and so like I could laugh at things and I'm like, oh my God, you know, like we could have those reactions with each other. So I think mm -hmm. right now it's just a time to get really creative about how we're connecting with people um, and stop, stop looking at the limit rather of of not being able to get together in person and start leaning into that and exploring like what that can mean so miley i know that you had a bunch of questions um from the last time and a couple of new ones so if you're yeah. uh if you're re listening to this rebroadcast we actually have more bonus content Woo! For you. Yes. like we said we're still getting used to this, so we missed a couple from the chat um on saturday night so we're going to throw those ones in here so um we'll start with an anonymous mission from Instagram. Um, what are some ideas for people that are quarantining at home with partners for at home date nights? Mm -hmm. um, actually, I saw a friend of mine uh, had their first anniversary with their sweetie yesterday. And um, they were, you know, they live together. So uh, what they decided to do was they decided to do a dress up dinner. Um, you know, they both they both got dressed up nicely as if they were going to go out. And one of them made dinner for the for the two of them, and so they had that as a date night. Um, another thing that I really love doing is, and I don't even think I mentioned this, um, something that I recommend to, to couples um, who are been together for a little bit is to have a um, little impromptu date night where each of them gets a half hour to lovely to the other person and that can either be sexual or it can be um, romantic or it can be comfy whatever you want it to be whatever y'all's boundaries are um, but one person gets 30 minutes to take care of their other partner um, as long as their partner says this is okay keep going um, and then at the end of that the you switch roles so it's kind of a give and receive date um, and that can be a really fun thing both to to shift the focus from what it might normally be. If you're normally like a standard operating procedure sex couple and that's where you get your comfort, this can be an opportunity for you to try something totally different. 
Um, if you're exploring things like rope bondage, do 30 minutes of each of you tying the other person up. Um, right. But you can you can kind of like make that time sacred in a way. Um, the other thing would be to explore something a little bit different. You know, if you normally, um, you know, watch movies together, it's like try doing a board game or, um, you know, if normally you have sex in one particular room of the house and you don't have kids, go have sex in all the other ones. You've got you've got a world of your house to explore. <laughs> uh, you know, um, if libido is feeling really like it's not kicking it, like shift into sensual time. Um, you know, touch is a really important thing. And when we're isolated, um, for a lot of folks that are very touch oriented right now, they're feeling like they're not getting enough of it, even if they are living with somebody. So having just a touch date where you get out the massage oil or you get out, um, you know, some body powder or something that lets you touch your partner in a different way. Those can be some wonderful ways to create a home dates. But my suggestion is to put it on your calendar and treat it just like you would if you were leaving the house. Um, one of the things that tends to happen is we um, we don't necessarily schedule things. And for people who like to be spontaneous, I totally get it. But sometimes when we schedule something, we mentally set it aside in our in our um, in our heads is like, oh, this is really important. I need to make sure that I'm able to focus. And so I think scheduling that time can be a really amazing thing for you right now. Great. All right. So we had a question from the live chat Saturday um, and a user said, what advice would you give to men that consistently get a no response in dating apps? Um, I would say lean into the ways that you're reaching out. Um, I'm not going to tell you, you know, we, we kind of know what the numbers are. Um, hashtag open actually has a far smaller gender uh, divide than um, most other mainstream uh, apps do. Um, you know, in some of those, it's 70 to 80 percent people who identify male. Um, because I think hashtag open is open to so many different genders um, and being able to at least identify as as yeah. whatever your your actual gender is rather than just check one male female. Um, mm -hmm. We do have a substantially larger focus um, on people that are uh, not just one gender. So it tends to be a little bit of uh, a more open playing field for folks. Um, but I, I would say like, look at really how you're, um, how you're reaching out to people. Um, most folks will be very open to somebody who's reaching out to them um, with a sense of openness and curiosity, even, even if it ends up as a no. Um, the other thing would be to take your time. Um, you know, we're, we're in a culture where, um, for most folks who are assigned female at birth, um, you know, there's experiences of being, pre um, of, of predatory behavior. And so pushing for, uh, yes, pushing for a quick response, um, getting frustrated when things don't move really quickly. I can understand those. And also we want to remember that, um, the speed of a connection needs to move at the comfort level of the most, um, of, of the person who needs to go the slowest in order for it to be successful. And that's the case in relationships. It's the case in dating. Um, we want to honor that whoever needs to move more slowly, um, that it's their consent and, and they get to drive the speed. Um, so I would say just take your time, move a little bit more slowly, um, dig a little deeper. Um, because that's the kind of stuff that people really react well to and that they're willing when they know that, that, you know, it's safe for them to open up, they're more willing to do so. Great. Um, another question from the live chat was, um, any recommend, any recommendations on what I can do to get them to pin down that time for staying intimate through texting? Like you were talking about, mm -hmm. about really creating that focus scheduled in time. Yeah. Um, I strongly recommend um, actually scheduling things out um, and and making a deal that unless it's something major that that schedule doesn't get broken. Um, right now, it feels like people are moving more to scheduling anyhow. There are a lot of people who are scheduling Zoom dates. There, there are a lot of people who are scheduling uh, webinars, things like that. 
Um, but saying like, you know, hey, I, I want to prioritize this. I'd like for you to prioritize it. Can we put a time on the calendar? Um, I, you know, from a, a, the, the, the other parts of my world says, give people two choices. Um, say like, oh, I can do today at three o'clock or I can do today at seven o'clock. Which one of those works for you? Um, when you give people uh, like really clear, concise choices, it's a lot easier for them to pick one, especially right now when a lot of folks are suddenly working from home and and don't don't feel really um, consistent about, you know, because there's like all of this stuff going on and they're kind of scrambling. Um, sometimes just narrowing down the request to giving a choice can can help a little bit. Um, but also saying like, hey, I'd really love to like, I'd really love to get busy with you. Um, you know, like, like, I'd really, you know, like at seven o'clock, yeah. let's be in our own beds with whatever lube or toys or, you know, in front of the TV yeah. or whatever the goal is going to be. Like, let's be at this place at this time and make this a date. Um, sometimes, you know, like just letting people know, like, hey, this is really important to me can can help them go like, oh, OK, let me prioritize this. Right. All right. Well, thank you. Um, another Instagram question was um, this user wants to know how to get started in the hashtag open lifestyle. Is it an easy conversation to start having with your partner? Um, so I I think that that question might have been about open relationships. Um, because hashtag open is a mindset, and not a lifestyle. Um, so there's, um, it is a difficult challenge because I think a lot of times when people initially uh, hear from a partner, hey, I want to do something really different, um, it can very much feel like what we're already doing isn't good enough or isn't working. And so we want to try to not put our partner in that position. Uh, as much as we can. Um, my my suggestion for like opening the door to conversations about uh, non-monogamy or kink or other kinds of relationship structures um, is to start off saying like, "Hey, I've been I've been reading a lot about this and thinking a lot about it, and I would love to have a conversation with you about like, you know, what I'm learning. Um, can we can we set up a time to talk about it? Um, by by doing that, we um, we prime the pump for them to at least know what the conversation is going to be about. Um, but we also distance it from, and I expect you to get on board with this, which is the way that a lot of times those conversations can feel. Um, it also allows your partner to have a little bit of time to think about it um, before you get into that. Um, most of us do when we hear something that, that kind of like sets us, on edge, um, we our initial reaction is not necessarily the same one as our considered reaction will be. And so making sure that our partner has a chance to think about what's happening without being pressured to consent is really, really critical if we want to have authentic relationships with our partners. Um, I have I have seen a lot of people that have said, you know, okay, let's let's read a book together and talk about it, or let's um, you know, let's figure out what is really important to us. Like, what is what do you mean by an open relationship? Do you mean that you have a hall pass? Do you mean that you know, like, you want to go out to a swing club together? Do you mean that you want to date more than one person? What does that look like? Um, you know, being ready to just simply say, like, hey, I'm curious about how you feel about this. And then letting your partner talk to you about it and then tell them, like, you know, I, I've been really curious about it. Like, I think it could be something that could be fun for us. Or I see that, you know, you periodically do fantasize about this. Like, I would like to make that happen for you. So there are lots of ways that I think we can um, we can broach the conversation with our partner. Um, just remember that we don't want to put them in a position where they're fe feeling either challenged by that conversation or where they're feeling like um, it's a response to them not being a good enough partner because those are the kind of things that set people up for really difficult uh, times with navigating this. Absolutely. 
All right, so um, we had some great other questions from users in the chat. One of them, um, a user uh, popped up and asked live, so we're gonna try and um, do that question the best as we can. Um, she was specifically asking what to do when you're feeling the burnout uh, after being on dating apps for a long time and really not having good luck mm -hmm. and kind of start to feel down about that. Yeah. Um, what advice you would have to kind of combat <clears throat> that? Um, so, uh, like legitimately I've been there, um, mm -hmm. you know, I've been on and off of, uh, online dating initially and then dating apps in the last, uh, you know, five, six, seven years. And, um, there are just times where I'm not really connecting with anybody that, that makes my heart excited. Um, there are also times where it's like, where have all of you people been? Like all of a sudden you're all here and I don't have enough time and bandwidth for all of you. Um, I think that it's really normal to have phases that are up and down and a little of a burnout kind of a situation. Um, and it's okay for you to take a break from it if you need to. Like, you know, just kind of put it aside for a hot minute, um, move on with other stuff, don't worry about it. Um, the first thing that I would say is if you want to stay engaged is to take the expectations that it's automatically going to end up with like finding the right next person. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes it's that we get our expectations so into like, Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm looking for the right next person um, that when that doesn't happen, it can actually be a really negative experience for us and it can lead to that burnout. Um, so drop the expectations and maybe just say like, hey, I'm just here to make friends right now. Um, you know, even if an absolute worst situation is you're going to make friends, that's not a bad place to mm -hmm. be. Um, but taking some of the expectation out of there. The other thing is if you feel like um, things aren't clicking the way you'd like them to, you know, sh shift your profile. Um, sometimes we get so used to, uh, you know, I did this for a while, um, on all of my different dating apps, I had the exact same profile. And when I realized like, oh, you know, like, uh, I'm just doing the same thing everywhere and expecting that it's going to work. And maybe this profile isn't really working for me anymore. Um, we can do things like that to also shake it up a little bit, but it's totally normal to feel burnout, especially if you've been doing this for a hot minute. Um, and I do 100% believe that sometimes we need to take a little bit of a break or we need to totally shift our expectations in order to get through that time frame. You know, like, um, the last thing that I, I think I mentioned during, during this is that, um, dating in apps is very seasonal. Um, there are a lot of people that, you know, um, first of the year, tons of people because they're all, you know, they come through the holidays and they're all like, okay, I've had enough of my family. I need some action now. Yeah. Um, but, you know, when kids are, are in school or when kids are out of school it seems to change it as well. Um, so sometimes it's simply just wait through the next couple of months and things are going to shift. Um, you know, so keep being present um, and, and trust that, you know, more people are all, you know, people are coming in to dating apps every day and we can kind of just trust that some of that is going to be, you know, um, to our benefit. Yeah. question, which is uh, great for considering what's going on and people being in isolation. And we know that, um, especially that people, uh, you know, it's tough mentally. Um, so this user said, what about managing folks' emotional capacities during this time of insert? We know that many people are not their best selves, but they still want and need connection. Um, yeah, most of us aren't our best selves right now, which <laughs> is, you know, like if you're your best self right now, my hat's off to you. Most of us are dealing with a lot of stuff. Um, I think that there's, there's two pieces in this. Um, one is that, that, you know, we want to be compassionate with where people are at and how they're showing up. Um, oh. because like I said, none of us, oh, yep, you're back. I can hear you a little bit now. 
Oh, yeah, your connection is, is being a little wonky, but I can hear you now. Yay. Um, I'm just going to keep going, Miley. Um, I think you're, you're probably going to join in uh, more consistently in a second. Uh, yay for internet uh, struggles during the time of COVID, because <laughs> this has been happening to everybody. Um, so people, people are showing up to the table with lots of different stuff you know most of us are dealing with a lot of emotional uh and physical needs that aren't getting met right now we're dealing with a lot of fear and it's it it, it is something to be compassionate with folks about you know we we certainly um we want to make room especially if we're interested in intimate connections and and i define intimacy as the person-to-person -person connection whether it's sexual friendship um family like all of that is intimacy um, so we want to acknowledge that those folks can um, kind of come to the table in whatever way they need to. Um, however, um, that doesn't mean that we should uh, ignore our own boundaries and our own uh, baseline needs. Um, if somebody is is showing up in a way that is feeling uncomfortable for you, it's really critical that you honor your own needs and your own boundaries and say so. Um, let them know like, hey, I get that you want some attention right now, and I appreciate that tremendously, but um, but that's not feeling good for me the way that you're doing it. Can we do this instead? Um, or to say, you know, I, I totally get that you want to have a date next week. That's not a safe thing for me. Um, you know, if you're willing to wait, that would be great. We could have a phone date next week if you'd like. That would also be fantastic. Um, but in general, you know, we uh, approaching it with compassion, but not at the expense of your own boundaries is the way that I would suggest going with that. Um, <clears throat> so, um, yeah, that's, that's how I would, uh, that's how I would just encourage you to approach those situations. So Miley, while you were gone, I kept talking about that and finished up that, uh, that question. So I'm ready for the Thank next you. one. We've got everybody homeschooling. So I think we're having <laughs> <laughs> some issues. Um, and I think the last one, and this was again one that we um, missed the other day. So, what advice would you give to couples that are looking for a partner or other partners right now? Um, definitely um utilize if you're if you're using hashtag open definitely utilize the partnered um profile option as well as the individual profile option um unlike a lot of the other dating apps that are made for people who are generally singles looking for other singles um hashtag open actually offers an option for singles to then um pair up their profiles um, so that they can date as a couple. So I would say definitely utilize that. Be very clear in each of your individual profiles that you are looking to date as a couple. Um, but don't be afraid of initiating those conversations with people. Um, make it, put it in your boundaries and, and in your what I'm looking for. Um, be really clear that you're looking for a third partner or you're looking for another couple or you're looking for, you know, singles, whatever it is that you're looking for. Um, be mindful that um, right now is a time where a lot of people are looking for a little something different. And my suspicion is that um, what we're going to see after some of the social restrictions are lifted is that people are going to be really willing to explore things if they feel safe doing so, um, because there's going to be a sense of making up for some lost time. Uh, so now is actually a great time for you to start connecting with people that might be a great third or, or fourth or fifth to bring into your relationship or into the bedroom. Um, do have some conversations with each other about what really does feel okay. Um, use solo chat to, to figure out like what's, you know, like, oh, are you feeling okay with the way I'm connecting with this person? Um, because this is also, particularly if you're newer to this, um, this is also your chance to be able to proceed slowly and do a lot of check-ins with your sweetie to make sure that everybody's feeling really good about this. Um, but I certainly think that right now can be a really good time to start 
expanding those boundaries and trying trying it a little bit differently. Just as always, be clear about what you're looking for and what you're willing to um, to offer to somebody who might want to connect with you and uh, take it from there. Absolutely. Yeah. There's so many ways, like we said, to connect right now. And, mm -hmm. you know, We would love to, uh, if you guys are following us on social media, tell us how you guys are keeping, you know, yeah. the romance alive at home. Um, we want to know. So um, we hope to connect with you in app. Sarah and I are both in app. We love chatting. We love talking to you. Uh, in-depth uh, video series on um, creating your profile on hashtag open or wherever. Uh, so please keep um, an eye on that some of the questions about you know with burnout and with um feeling like their profile people's profiles are not um as active as they want i think oh, miley is breaking setup up a little bit will help with some of that um is a good start for people who are feel like they're struggling yeah yeah um so miley is uh i'm gonna restate what you just said miley in case you can still hear us um so what miley was saying is to keep an eye on our social media oh. feeds we're gonna be doing more and more um videos and we do actually have plans to do a, a little uh, broadcast and chat about how to uh, create a profile that gets you the kind of attention and the kind of interest that you're looking for. We know that that's something that a lot of folks struggle with and we have people who are excited to help you with that. Um, so definitely keep an eye on our social media feed. And um, if you have ideas uh, for things that you'd like to see us do, just uh, send us an email, send us a DM. You can always um, message the open team through hashtag open. Um, and you can uh, make sure that you follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and other social media. Um, so I think that is about it um, because I see Miley is still struggling. I'm just going to wrap this up with um, thank you all for being a uh, part of our rebroadcast. Um, we hope that you're enjoying the rest of your uh, your uh, time in isolation, uh, you know, feel free to reach out to each other though, because the way that we're all going to get through this is together. And we want to make that a possibility for everybody. So I hope you're having a wonderful rest of your day and we look forward to seeing you at another uh, class at, or another uh, event soon.